And thank you for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Ephraim Graham. Here are some of the big headlines we're following today in the CBN Newsroom. Rescue crews are working frantically in search of survivors in Montecito, California. More than 40 people are still missing after Tuesday's massive mudslide, including four children. Meanwhile, residents are picking up the pieces and coping with the loss of lives and property. At least 17 people have died and the disaster has destroyed more than 400 homes. Immigration agents have raided dozens of 7-Eleven stores across the country in search for undocumented workers. Agents have arrested 21 people for being in the U.S. illegally. The operation is said to be the first of many. It is the peak of flu season and America is hard hit. A 21-year-old from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, died from the illness. illness. Kyler Bowman, a bodybuilder, died just days after experiencing symptoms. His parents are now warning others, if you get sick, take care of it. A mother in Boston and a toddler in Ohio have also died. Facebook is changing again. It's allowing users to see posts that are more meaningful to them. The idea is to connect people to more of what they care about. But the change could hurt organizations that rely upon Facebook to share their content. We'll have more on these stories later in the show and at CBNNews.com. We begin now with a setback to negotiations over immigration reform in Washington. After President Donald Trump uses vulgar language to describe certain countries, Meanwhile, the federal government runs out of money one week from today. The White House is dealing with fallout after details of a private meeting between the president and several senators leaked to the media. When presented with an immigration deal that included restoring protections from immigrants from Haiti and some African countries, according to people inside the room, the president asked, why are we having all these people from expletive countries come here? The news sent shockwaves through Washington and drew immediate accusations of racism from Democrats. This remark by the president of the United States smacks of blatant racism, the most odious and insidious racism masquerading poorly as immigration policy. The White House didn't deny the president's remarks, but issued a statement saying, Certain Washington politicians choose to fight for foreign countries, but President Trump will always fight for the American people. Adding he'll only accept a deal that addresses the visa lottery system and chain immigration. Today, senators are back at the drawing board. We have no agreement with the president. And House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi also taking heat after this remark about the legislators working on an immigration reform deal. The five white guys, I call them, you know. Um, <laughs> I thought they were going to open a hamburger stand next or what? Democratic whip Steny Hoyer pushed back saying in a statement to Politico, that comment is offensive. I am committed to ensuring dreamers are protected and I will welcome everyone to the table who wants to get this done. Despite the criticisms and name calling, the federal government runs out of money in one week. Congressional Republicans need votes from Democrats to pass a measure to keep the government running. And some Democrats are threatening to withhold their vote unless an immigration deal is reached. Pentagon officials tell CBN News the Defense Department has no plans to increase the size of the U.S. nuclear arsenal. But that's not stopping another country from doing so. And we're not talking about North Korea. Our national security correspondent Eric Gonzalez has more on Russia's desire to expand its nuclear power. Lately, the eyes of the world have been on North Korea, its dictator Kim Jong-un and the threat of a nuclear strike against the United States. Now, a potentially new threat. CBN News has learned Russia plans to expand its nuclear arsenal. And the reason why we should be worried is because Russia's national security goals at times are at fundamental odds with those of the United States. Michaela Dodge specializes in missile defense and nuclear weapons modernization for the Heritage Foundation. She says Russia has constantly violated treaties by making certain types of nuclear armed ballistic missiles. Now Pentagon sources tell CBN News they've learned Russia wants to expand its nuclear weapons from approximately 7,000 to 8,000 over the next 10 years. Some believe that includes nukes that would deliver a crippling electromagnetic pulse 
pulse and weapons that release large amounts of radiation. Sources say Russia's new weapons would likely include both large strategic warheads, more powerful than the bomb dropped on Hiroshima, and short-range ballistic missiles to get around arms treaty limits. Pentagon top brass say they are monitoring the situation. It's about alliances and partnerships, and we're going to continue to help our NATO allies to deter any any aggression. We watch it closely. I think we're, we, we are on a trajectory that we believe is, uh, is going to give us a lot of good alternatives as we confront their growing forces. Dodge agrees with President Trump that the United States must address its aging nuclear weapon supply. We won't need an increase, but I want modernization and I want total rehabilitation. It's got to be in tip-top shape. Word is Vladimir Putin feels threatened by America's ballistic missile defenses, particularly those capable of shooting down intercontinental ballistic missiles. Right now, we are working under an assumption that potential for conflict with Russia is low and that uh, Russia is no longer an adversary, which was President Obama's policy. That is not true. Agreements with the United States currently limit Russia to 1,550 deployed strategic nuclear warheads at any one time. Extras must be set aside in non-deployed stockpiles. Pentagon sources tell CBN News Russia is also renovating two major command and control centers, along with several other smaller facilities. Something else that needs to be upgraded here in the U.S. as well. Eric Rosales, CBN News, Washington. Victims of human trafficking are speaking out in Washington, calling on Congress to pass legislation to disrupt the growing online sex trafficking industry. Abigail Robertson brings us more now from Washington. While prostitution is illegal in most of the country and strictly regulated in Nevada, there's nothing that prohibits the Internet from advertising about it. More than 60 senators are working to close this legal loophole and bring survivors their day in court. The more we dug into it, the more we realized that there was a federal law that protected these websites from the kind of prosecution you would normally expect and the kind of court cases that the victims would normally be able to bring. The Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, or SESTA, would prevent those who use the web to traffic adults and minors from escaping liability. Lauren Hirsch, a former New York City prosecutor, left her job to become an advocate for victims when she saw the shift to online trafficking and a shortage of laws regulating the new marketplace. I guess for the last six, maybe six and a half years, I've been sort of yelling at the computer screen saying, how is this possible? How is this legal? Watching young people being sold day in and day out and websites making huge amounts of money from it. She says passing SESTA would help victims in their legal battles against websites like Backpage.com. It gives survivors avenues to hold these websites that are exploiting kids or facilitating exploitation of kids. It, it gives survivors the avenue to hold these websites accountable. The House passed a similar bill in November, but critics like Senator Portman say it does more harm than good by protecting tech companies over victims. When people hear these stories and they understand what we're doing and how narrowly targeted this legislation is, it's not meant to interfere with the freedom of the Internet. Uh, I think just the opposite. I think it's important that the Internet police itself better. The Senate could vote on the bill by the end of the month. Right now, unbelievably, in this country, in this century, you have an increase in sex trafficking, an increase. I mean, it's tragic. And we know it's happening, and we know why it's happening, and we can do something about it. Senator Portman hopes once the bill passes the Senate, his colleagues in the House will consider strengthening their version of the legislation. Reporting from Capitol Hill, Abigail Robertson, CBN News. Thank you, Abigail. Still ahead, we are talking about the president's plan for prison reform with our team in D.C. Stay with us for a live report. Welcome back to CBN Newswatch. As we've been reporting this hour, President Trump has a full plate and also on the table is prison reform. CBN's Jenna Browder joins us now live from Washington with more on this. You were at the White House covering this roundtable. What can you tell us about the faith community and prison reform? Yeah, good morning, Ephraim. You know, this is a big deal to the faith community. President Trump, he hosted this roundtable yesterday at the White House. There were a lot of big names there, uh, Paula White, Daryl Scott, 
And prison reform is such a, um, it's, it's, so, it's so important that uh, the faith community be a part of it because yesterday's meeting was about uh, people re-entering, inmates re-entering society. And so faith, of course, plays a big part in that. And yesterday they talked about, you know, mental health care, drug addiction, suicide rate, uh, job opportunities, and the difficulties of, of getting a job once you are let out of prison. So the faith community is certainly a big part in, uh, in, in that process. One of the people you named there in the faith community was um, Pastor Paula White, uh, and we know that she works very closely with the president. What was her take in being there? Yeah, you know, after after the uh, meeting, it was at about 1.30, uh, my colleague David Brody and I, we host Faith Nation together, we caught up with Paula, and she was very encouraged by what she heard inside that meeting. She, of course, very close to the president. She's perhaps the most influential evangelical in his life. She's his faith advisor. And she just said that, uh, you know, they, what, they, what they talked about was really um, ways to help these inmates once they get out of prison. So whether it's uh, mental health, whether it's suicide, uh, jobs and skills and and uh, just being able to re-enter the workforce. And she mentioned the word mentoring. It's not about helping these people when they're three three months out from being let go. It's, it's starting that process immediately once they're incarcerated. And in terms of from the faith community. This started for us really at a dinner almost a year ago. We had 40 faith leaders that had a private dinner with the president up in, you know, what I guess would be considered his residence. Yeah. And, and uh, there were some people sitting at Jared's table and they said, you know, if every church in America adopted a few prisoners and really worked on some of, we took some of the best practices of, because mentoring, it's not just a one, you can't just, oh, this solves it, this solves it. It's a very, what I'm gonna say, systemic and holistic approach. Jen, wouldn't have much time, but she mentioned Jared in that statement. Jared Kushner's mm -hmm. been a big part of this. Yeah, he's been a big part of it. You know, he's really the force behind it. Uh, his father, he was imprisoned uh, several years ago. And so that's really kind of, I think, his motivation here is how can we help people who are in prison, not only when they're in prison, but once they're out of prison as well. All right, Jenna Browder, thank you so much for following this story. And of course, we've got more on this at CBNNews.com. Up next, fighting the flu. See why this flu strain is more dangerous than previous years and what you can do to keep yourself protected. Health officials say this is already shaping up to be a bad flu season. The Centers for Disease Control warns of potentially widespread flu this year in at least 10 states, mostly in the South and Southwest. Statistics reveal more than 13,000 cases nationwide since October, and the seasonal peak is not expected for a few more weeks. As we reported earlier, a 21-year-old bodybuilder, Kyler Bowman, died within days of contracting the illness. Let's begin with Kyler, I mean, dying? So sad. Mm. And we know that 13 children, he was 21, so he was just just over the line of being an adult. 13 children have already died this flu season. So, yes, it really does strike people who look like the picture of health. Yeah, 21-year-old bodybuilder. I will say he mm -hmm. did not get the flu vaccine, okay. just as an added note that, that his warned. parents did mention that in an interview. So when it comes to protecting ourselves, what kind of things should we be doing? Well, doctors across the board say the best thing you can do is get the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are afraid of the flu vaccine. They believe that it gives, that can lead to autism, but there is no medical evidence supporting that. And also you cannot get the flu from getting the flu vaccine. Mm -hmm. Now we all know that the flu vaccine is not 100% accurate, mm -hmm. but most doctors will say that the benefits outweigh the, outweigh the risks. Aside from getting, and by the way, it's it's not too late to get That's the flu vaccine. Ask, is it too late? Many people watching saying, well, we're already in the middle of it. Why should I? Right. It usually it takes a couple of weeks to uh, to incubate. Mm -hmm. And so you still can get the flu a, a lot of times during that first or second week after getting the flu vaccine. It lasts about six months, okay. but it's not too late. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and uh, so aside from the vaccine, uh, the best thing to do is to avoid people who have the flu. <laughs> Duh. But that's true. Yes. And yes. if you are sick, do your and everyone else a favor and mm -hmm. 
don't go to work yes. or B, go to school. Yeah. Uh, hello, newsroom. <laughs> I know there are some people in the newsroom who are sick, Bad and I wear this, you know, and they touch the, the handles mm -hmm. of the refrigerator and the doorknobs and the handrails. And, and that leads to the third thing is keep your hands clean. clean. And that means washing them with warm, soapy water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't think that just like uh, getting them rinsed mm -hmm. does anything because it doesn't. Exactly. And you need to wash them for about 20 seconds, lather up for about 20 seconds. That's like as long as it takes to sing the happy birthday Correct. song twice. If you don't uh, wash them, then hand sanitizer is good, but make sure that it's at least 70% alcohol. All and right. then also, of course, strengthen your immune system. We're talking about things like sleep, many vitamins, get mm -hmm. those probiotics to get the good bacteria, which helps with your immune system, mm -hmm. and uh, reduce stress. One of the best ways to reduce stress is exercise, and the list goes on and on, mm -hmm. and uh, avoid inflammatory foods like sugar and processed foods. How are we comparing this flu season to others? Is this one of the worst? What are doctors saying? The, the CDC mm -hmm. is monitoring this very closely, and they say this is, could be one of the worst ones. Uh, they're saying that it might be as bad as 2009 when we had to deal with the swine flu. Yeah, remember, remember that? Remember that was indeed. awful. So, yeah, people do need to take precautions. Indeed. And, of course, you write about this on your blog and give us great advice. That's right www.cbnnews.com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Lori. Great advice. Sure. Much appreciated. A beloved teddy bear is back on the screen. Take a look at Paddington 2. Three young man's game. Well, I think you're in great shape for a man your age, Mr. Brown. Ah, thank you, Paddington. Hang on. How old do you think I am? Oh, about 80. 80? At least. Safely settled in London with the Brown family, the popular teddy bear Paddington is back for the follow-up to his first box office success. Any pressure on you coming back to do this story again? Any concerns, fears? Well, there's always a bit of a concern about, you know, what they call the second album syndrome. You know, have you still got it? And uh, it's lovely that people have been reacting to the second film calling it, uh, you know, the Godfather 2 of, of family films, uh, in that it's uh, as good, if not better, than the first. So that's lovely. Now then, simmer down, simmer. All right, a little bit more. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm at my worst tonight. I really am. I am tickled the deepest shade of shrimp. This Paddington story adds a few new faces to the familiar cast. I'm going to ask one of you to come up here and open the fair. Volunteers. Anyway, meeny, meeny, miny. Bear. You, this is your first run with Paddington. What was it about the story that made you want to sign off? Um, it was a very juicy part. <laughs> uh, and, and therapeutic for me to, to bring out my inner narcissistic. Inner? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Ah, that must be the popping book. Very interesting. Really? You see, Madame Kosliver's great-grandmother, who started the fair, was also a brilliant artist. And every time they visited a new city, she made a popping book to remember it by. In this adventure, this Paddington spots a pop-up book in an antique shop, the perfect present for his aunt's 100th birthday. But a thief steals it before he can raise the money to buy it. Director Paul King and actor Simon Farnaby wrote the screenplay. How fast did this script come about for Paddington 2? Some of the ideas came about quite, quite sort of quickly. We very cruelly... We thought we'd cracked it, didn't we, in about yeah. a week. And then a yeah. year and a half later, we realized <laughs> yeah. we'd finally got it right. We had this sort of bare bones. We knew we wanted to put him out in the community and meet some neighbors. So we were excited about writing some neighbor characters. And we knew we wanted this book to get his Aunt Lucy, you know, this special present for his birthday, and, and that that was going to get him into trouble and sent to prison. That was all quite quick, but then, you know, as Paul said, it's the rest of it is <laughs> the hard work. Simply add sentences. Yeah, simply fill it out. And a funny fill-out it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
please. Would you mind if I call you guy? I, I think I may be about to shave a customer. Oh, thank goodness. Just putting you on hold. Paddington has been um, a part of our culture for many years now. Do you guys remember your first connection with, with the bear? My mother read me Paddington stories every night. Um, and uh, as a result, I now can't sleep without one. I, my girlfriend has to read me. It has to be apple, glass of milk, and then I get tucked in. My mum and dad uh, read me the stories when I was very little, but then what became significant for me was that they became the first stories that I read for myself when I was old enough. So I had a very deep connection with Paddington growing up and uh, was therefore quite nervous when I heard they were going to make a movie and, and you know, mess with my bear. I can tell you this, even if you didn't see the first Paddington, it is well worth seeing the second. It is indeed extremely funny. You and your family will enjoy. My daughter and I will be there tonight as well. Well, it is now time for your Friday Faithful. And as we wrap up this week and begin the weekend, I want you to remember this. God is faithful. He is faithful even when we are not faithful. And there is no greater love than the love that he shows to us every single second of every every single day. Remember, he sent his one and only son to die for you. And if that's not love, I am not sure what is. With that word, you be sure to make today a fabulous Friday and spend some time giving thanks to our almighty God for all he is and all that he has done for us. Make it a fabulous Friday and a wonderful, wonderful weekend. You certainly deserve it. Well, that is going to do it for this edition of CBN Newswatch. Thank you so much for watching all week long. Remember, you can always find more exclusive coverage of the issues you care most about at CBNNews.com. And we would love to hear from you. Take the time to write us and let us know what you think about the stories you've seen here today. You can do that, of course, at CBNNews.com and also by simply writing us Newswatch at CBNNews.com. Thanks again for watching. And remember, you can also reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We love hearing from you, and perhaps we'll be sharing that right here on this newscast. Hope you'll join us again right here next time for CBN News Watch. Make it a fabulous Friday, a wonderful weekend. We'll see you right back here come Monday. Goodbye, everybody, and God bless you.